Welcome to Biology Minds. Today we're going to talk about the anatomy of the muscular system. So we've already talked about muscle tissue and the anatomy as, long as, the, as well as the physiology that goes along with the muscular tissue, tissue. But now we're just going to talk about the anatomy of the muscular system, the different muscles that are involved with the muscular system. So when we're talking about the muscular system, we're typically talking about uh, where the muscles start, where they end, where what are they moving, their insertion, their origin, um, and what uh, limbs are they moving or what body part are they moving, what are they doing specifically, what is their function. But to start out, we talk kind of about physics. So just like with physiology, we're always talking about chemistry. Physics also comes into anatomy as well. So it's nice to see all of the sciences come together. We see that um, when we talk about uh, different levers in the body, just like we talk about the different joints, how we have a, a hinge joint and a saddle joint and all these different types of joints, we talk about the different types of le levers. So there's three classes of levers. We have first class levers, second class levers, and third class levers. And they're basically the difference is where the apl uh, force is applied, where the fulcrum is, and when where the resistance is. So we see in the first class lever, it's like a seesaw. Um, or a teeter totter, whatever you know you call it, uh, where the center fulcrum between uh, applied force and the load, the force and the load are then balanced. So we see that um, you know, like a pry bar. If you ever you know used the seesaw when you were a little kid, you had your load and you had your applied force, depending on which kid was uh, putting their feet up and which kid was pushing off, and you had your fulcrum in the middle. Second class lever. We see that it's like a wheelbarrow. You have uh, your your fulcrum across from your applied force, and your lever is in the middle. Then you have third class levers, which we talk about a lot in the human body. Um, the elbow is a third class lever. It is more like a catapult, where you have your fulcrum um, away from the lever and the applied force is pulling at that lever. So we have our lever out here, or this is the lever, and we are pulling it with the applied force. So those are the three classes of uh, levers. When we talk about the uh, muscles, we always talk about origin. Where is it starting? Where is the, the muscle coming from? And where does it insert into? So muscles have one point of attachment. That's our origin and one moving point, which is our insertion. So every muscle has an origin and, and they all have an insertion. When we talk about different muscles, we all, always talk about you know the type of movements that they do. They, if they produce a, a particular or a specific movement, we call them prime movers. And then um, we're always talking about antagonists, okay? You have the agonist, which is going to uh, move in a specific way, and then you have an antagonist, which, which antagonist, which is going to go in the opposite way, and then you also have synergists, which are going to help our agonists. So if it's going against your agonist, we call it an antagonist. If it's going with your agonist, it's called a synergist. It is helping that agonist move the way that we want it to move. Names of skeletal muscles are based on location of the body, origin, and insertion. Fascicle organization a lot of times. We've seen that in the previous chapter. Uh, relative position, structural characteristics, and the action. Remember when we talked about the, the division of the skeletal system, we had our axial skeleton and our appendicular skeleton. The same thing goes for the muscular system. We have our axial muscles and we also have our appendicular muscles. Um, about 60% of our skeletal muscles are within that core, that axial skeleton, and then about 40% of the skeletal muscles are in that appendicular skeleton, and that is going to support the limbs and support the pectoral and the pelvic girdles. When we talk about uh, muscles, you know, there's numerous muscles within the body, but typically we like to talk about the ones that can be seen on the exterior. Okay, There's many deep within, but you need to know the ones on the exterior. These are the, the primary ones that you're going to want to know for an introductory anatomy class, the, the, your freshman or your sophomore human anatomy and physiology class. Once you get into uh, med school, and if you're going to become an orthopedist, that's when you have to know all of the muscles in the body and you have to know all the origins and all the insertions. But as far as uh, we're concerned, when we're talking about an introductory course, you're going to want to just really know the, for the most part, the locations. And, you know, it's good to know uh, possibly what their function is, but 
more or less you want to know the names of them and the locations of them. So we talk about um, the frontal belly of the occipital frontalis. That is right here, your forehead. So if you notice, the names go along with the names that we've been learning for the skeletal system and, and and uh, the other anatomical terms that we've talked about. So if you remember those, they help you to now remember the different mu mu muscles. We have our temporalis, which is, you know, your temple. Okay. Um, we would talk more about in the next slide or slides coming up, more in of these facial muscles. A big one when we talk about the neck is this sterdocletomastoid. This is going to help with moving your head, keeping your head balanced. You have this, your traps, the real name of your traps are the trapezius. Your clavicle is going to uh, be a point of attachment for the trapezius, as well as your pectoralis major, so your pecs, okay? You have your pectoralis major. Shoulder is going to be your deltoid. Latissimus dorsi, these are your lats, okay? This is going to be on your side. You have your serratus anterior. You are going to have your rectus abdominis, that's your abs. You have a line of connective tissue that runs through this. This is uh, your linea alba. And then you have your obliques, your external obliques. And then within the arm, you're going to have your biceps brachii, which is your biceps in the back which is going to be an antagonist, is going to be your triceps brachii. All right, um, right here we see it in this, okay, it is in the back. So we see it better from a posterior view. We have our brachialis deep within this. And then we have our pronator teres right here. We have our extensor carp carpi radialis longus right here, extensor carpi radialis brevis right here, Palmar, palmaris longus is right here, we have our flex, flexor carpi radialis right here, our flexor digitorum superficialis, and our flexor carpi ul, ulnaris right here. So those are all of the forearm. We see that with the upper arm, it's a lot easier. We have, uh, you know, mainly our brachialis, so well, was, along with our biceps brachii and our triceps brachii. When we get down to the lo lower extremities, extremities, we have our tibialis uh, anterior right here. So um, this is our tibia and our patella, and you can use that as a point of reference to know that, hey, this is our tibialis anterior. And then towards the outside, we have our fibularis longus. We also have our soleus right here that goes down to the foot. And our calves are actually called our gastrocnemius. And then up when we talk about our quads, right, we call them the quads because it's four major muscles in our quads. We have our vastus medialis right here, vastus lateralis, so medial, lateral, rectus femoris. This is a major one right here. Sartorius is right here. This is the longest muscle in the body. Something good to know. All right, a little trivia. Our sartorius is our, our longest muscle in our body. Gracialis, we are gracilis. We have here adductor longus. We have right here pectineus is right here. And then we have our iliopsoa right here. So these are all names that you want to know when we talk about our lower extremities. Deep within, there are more muscles, but we don't typically talk about them. Then from a posterior view, we have our occipital belly of our occipital frontalis. We can just barely see our sternocleidomastoid. Traps, this is, all of this are your trapezius muscles. Deltoid is the shoulder. Teres minor, along with the teres major. We have our rhomboid major, which typically you won't have to know because it's deep within, hidden behind your latissimus dorsi. So this back strap, this huge part, is your latissimus dorsi, one that you definitely have to know. Brachioradialis is right here. Extensor carpi radialis longus, we see right here. And then we have our anconius right here, flexor carpi ulnaris right here, extensor digitorum is right here, and extensor carpi ulnaris is right there. And then from the posterior view, you're going to want to know that you have our glutes, which is our 
gluteus maximus right here, and then deep within there you have your gluteus minius. Ab abductor magnus is right here. Semitendinosus is going to be right here. Semimembranosus is within that. Gracilis is going to be here. Biceps femoris is right here. And we're going to have our sartorius. Remember that again. Uh, plantaris is right here. All right. Usually that's not going to be pointed out because it is not easy to identify or see. But you definitely need to know that your calf muscle is called your gastrocnemius. Okay, soleus, a little bit easier to see posterior, goes down to the foot. And then we talk about the face. So that's for the most part, those are the muscles that you need to know. You also want to know some of these in the face. Uh, you know, what's moving our mandible is going to be our masseter. Um, we also have our temporalis, which is going to be our, you know, uh, part of our, our temple. You have orbicularis oculi around our eye. We have your nasalis uh, on your nose. You also want to know zygomaticus minor as well as zygomaticus major. All right, you have your major and your minor. A big one is your orbicularis oculi. You also have your mentalis which is part of your chin, your mental. When we talk about mental lymph nodes, that is going to be your chin, mentalis, chin. So when you hear mental, we're referring to chin, mentalis. Orbicularis oris, like I said. Uh, depressor labi inferioris oris. De depressor aguli oris. These are also part of your, your uh, jaw muscles. And then you have your uh, platysma, your platysma right here, which they pulled away, trap, sternocleidomastoid, uh, buccinator, which is uh, within your cheeks. And these are the muscles that you need to know. So moving forward, make sure that you know all the muscles that I just highlighted so that you uh, can do well on your, your exam as well as your lab practical.